All right. Anything else? A couple of biblical texts here. Look at look at number nine real quickly here. I have kabed et avicha ve et imecha. All right. So this is one of the ten commandments. Look at kabed here. These are three root letters. Kabed. What do you see in root two here? Dagesh Forte. So this is a PL or a Pual. What do you see under root one? It's a Pathak, so that's a PL. Now, with no prefixes, this PL could be a perfect. It could be an imperative. What does that Pathak commit me to? Can this be the PL perfect? No. This has got to be the PL imperative with no ending. So in the imperative personal endings, which one is the zero ending form? 2MS. If you look at your boxes with the inflectional prefixes and suffixes, that's, that's characteristic of the imperative, 2MS. Okay? So this is a command. What is, what is um, here, the cow perfect is caveed like this. I have the long A, and because it's state of, it's a serine, it means to be honored or to be heavy. This is the PL and it's an imperative. Make someone be honored. How would we translate that? Well, just honor someone, right? Honor someone. So honor whom? Et avicha. Honor whose of? Your. That's to a mess, pronoun, right? Honor your av. Just remember, av gets this kiric yod before the ka. Does this make av plural? If I have this yod before the ka, does that mean a plural set of fathers? No. Usually, a yod before a pronoun means the noun's plural, but I have to ask myself what vowel comes before the yod. If it's a kiric, the noun is singular. If it's any other vowel before the yod, the noun is plural, okay? So this is one father, and this is to a mess. It's singular, right? So each of you individually honor your father, the et imecha, and your mother, okay? The lexical form of this word is aim. Is that a monosyllabic word with a changeable vowel? Yes. So there's going to be a dagesh forte that drops in here as soon as I add an ending to it. And because the accent is on the other syllable, this aim with the dagesh forte in it is closed and unaccented. It has to be short because the cuss rule says closed, unaccented syllables require a short vowel. Okay? So honor your father and your mother. Uses a PL imperative. Let's look at number eight. We have Zahor et Yom HaShabbat Lekadosho. So this is the verb that means to do what? Zahor from Zahar to remember. Look at the vowel pointing. Long A under root one, whole involved with root two. Which, which stem and conjugation pattern has that vowel pattern? Okay, yeah, look at the pointing here. Long A under root 1, whole involved with root 2. That is the infinitive absolute. So look at our form. I have a Cal infinitive absolute. This is one of those situations where the infinitive absolute does not accompany a main verb and so it's not being used as an emphasis verb to emphasize the main verb. It's not being used as a complementary infinitive absolute. What it's doing is it's functioning like a main verb. Here it's functioning like an imperative. This is going to be translated as if it were an imperative. Remember at Yom HaShabbat. Remember the day of the Sabbath, which is to say remember the Sabbath day. 
Now this is interesting. This is a verbal form with a Lamed preposition in front of it and a 3MS pronoun on the back side of it. Okay, what is this? What kind of verbal forms can take a preposition Lamed? That's right. An infinitive construct can take preposition lamids and bets and coughs. Okay? Here's the question. Which stem is this infinitive construct in? Is it cal, nifal, pl, pool? Well, look at root two. What do you see inside the dalit? That's a dagesh forte. And look under root one. That's a pathox. So this is which stem, pl or pool? It's the pl. Okay, so this is a PL infinitive construct with the preposition Lamed <clears throat> plus, which pronoun is that? The 3MS pronoun. Okay, so you could translate this as remember the Sabbath day to, yeah, to keep holy or consecrate or, or make holy. Make what holy? That's what my pronoun's doing here. It's, it's, it's functioning here as, as an object, okay? <clears throat> if you remember, one of the uses of the Lamed preposition with an infinitive is, is what's called the uh, ep-exegetical use by blanking, in which case you could also translate this as uh, remember the Sabbath day by making it holy or keeping it holy, okay? So, so those, that's another way to translate that. All right. Let, let's just remind ourselves. D does the PL infinitive construct have a pathok under root 1 and a doubling dot in root 2? The answer is yes. Here's my infinitive construct on the principal parts page. No prefix. Pathok under root 1, doubling down on root 2. I would normally have a sere here, but if I add a pronominal suffix, that's going to reduce the vocal shiva. Okay? So this, this way of parsing does match what we're, uh, what we're seeing in our, in our uh, principal part sheet, but then making allowance for things to be tacked onto the back. Okay, any final questions on 27? Okay, so looking at the chapter 28 exercises, here we're going to do the translation work. All right, <clears throat> which questions do we want to cover here on the chapter 28 translation work? All right, let's look at number six here. I have Hineni. Hineni mukater et hazavachim al Hamizbeach. So what's Heneni? What's the basic word that this has stuff attached to? This is one of, yeah. Yeah, what's the Hebrew word? Hene. Hene. That's right. So this is Hene. What is attached to Hene? Which pronoun is this? This is, yes, I, one CS. So you could say, here I am. Or behold me, or behold I, or look I, okay? Or here I am. Now look at what I have next. I have mukater, mukater. This is one of your new verbs in this chapter, katar. What is in root two? That is a dagesh forte. So this is either a pl or a pool. How do I know which it is? Root one. Tells me it's what? It's a PL. Now I have a mem prefix with that PL. What must that be? It's got to be the participle. Excellent. And if it's the participle, which participle has no ending on the back end? It's 
the same endings as nouns and adjectives, right? It's masculine, singular. So why is the masculine singular form chosen here? Because the I on Hanani is probably a man, okay? So look, see, behold, I, and then what's this, what's Qatar mean in the, in the PL? Sacrificing, burning, burning sacrifices, okay? It's active because it's PL. So behold, I am, or here I am, burning sacrifices, Okay, et hazavachim uh, are the uh, direct objects. So here I am burning the sacrifices. Al hamizbeach. What's all mean here? On and hamizbeach, the altar. Okay. Notice the root letters for zavach here for in mizbeach are the same root letters for the noun sacrifices, right? A mizbeach is a place for sacrifices, which is an altar. All right. Other questions? Number four. Let's, uh, let's look at that. I have yusupad, I'm sorry, yusupar, yusupar, lamelech, Ki hanavi po. All right, so what's my, what are my root letters here on yusufar? Yusupar, sorry. It's roots one, two, three. Safar. What's inside root two? Dagesh forte. So this is either PL or Pual. What does root one's vowel commit me to? It's got to be Pual. Can't be PL. I have a yod prefix and nothing on the back. This could be the imperfect what? Imperfect 3ms. It could also be what what else is identical to the imperfect 3ms? It could be justive as well, right? So we we really don't know unless we have a a wider context to look at. So for now, let's go with imperfect, but just realize that could also be justive, okay? So um, what does Safar mean in the PL? To, to report, tell, narrate, recount, okay? But this is Pu'al, so we got to make it passive. So he or it will be reported, okay? So here it's probably it since it's a report. So it will be reported or it will be told la melech to the king. Do you see an article here in in this form? Yeah. The article hey has been swallowed up by the preposition lamed. It has left its pathak and doubling dot, right? So it has it it will be reported or told to the king key This is going to give me the content of the report. So I'm going to take this key as that. Okay? That what happened or what's going on? That Hanavi Po. What's Navi? Prophet. Hanavi Po. That the prophet here. What do I need to add in English? Yeah, I want to add the copula. All right, good. That the prophet is here. Okay. Could that key also be because? It it could it could be technically possible, uh, but then I would be looking for the content of the report somewhere else, right? I'd, I'd probably have more to my sentence. It was told to the king because the prophet is here. I feel like there's something missing, right? So I think that's why if this is all we've got, it's better to go with the, the key as that here, and, and it indicates what was reported. Like if this were the PL and this were an active verb, it would be something like the, the herald reported to the king ki hanavi po, that the prophet was here or is here. So 
If this were an active verb, I'd expect the key to be that uh, also. And so when it's made passive, it's still going to be that. Uh, okay, other questions on the translation work here? Number three. Number three. Here I have another hene. So, hene ishtaha lama amarta ki ahotaha hi. Okay, so hene ishtaha. What does that mean? Here, this is an existential use where this is being presented as as existing or being present. Here is ishtaha. What's ishtaha? Yeah, your wife. Have a 2MS pronoun attached to a form of wife. It's the construct form of wife, which is eshet. Right, isha becomes eshet when it's in the construct. And then when I add the pronominal suffix, I lose the, uh, the stress here and I get a short vowel and a silent shiva here. Okay, so ishtaha, your wife. Here is your wife. Lama. Remember lama? It's a question word. Why amarta? That's perfect to a mess. So why did you say? Why did you say what? Ki, here again, it's dir uh, direct speech, or, or excuse me, it's indirect speech. It's reporting uh, the content of what was said. Why did you say that? Ahotaha hi. What is ahot? Yeah, this is the word sister. And whose sister is indicated by the pronominal suffix? Why did you say that? Your sister, he? That's the pronoun for she. What am I missing here? Missing a copula again, right? That's right. So why did you say that she is your sister? <laughs> That's right. And you know the answer to that if you've read the book of Genesis. All right. Good. Other other questions here? All right. Let's look at number two here. Uh, let me clear this uh, this stuff out here. All right. I have Gadol Adonai Umuhulal Maod Ba'ir Eloheinu. Gadol Adonai Umuhulal Maod Ba'ir Eloheinu. So, uh, Gadol, Gadol Adonai. That's not a verb at all. This is just a verbless clause missing a copula. How would you translate this? Yeah. Adonai is great, or great is Adonai. And Mahulal Maod. Look at Mahulal. Does this look like an identifiable new verb that you've learned? <coughs> yes, hey, lamed, lamed. Right? Yes, this is the verb for praising. Is there a dagesh forte there in root two? Yep. Yes. So I have either PL or PUAL. Is there a, a U class vowel there in root one? Yeah. So that's a PUAL. And I have a mem prefix. So that must be participle. With no ending, it must be masculine singular. Okay? This is further describing Adonai. That's the idea here. Adonai is great and Muhulal, it's passive. The PL means to praise. The Puals to be praised, right? So so I would translate this as praised. Okay. So that's one way to translate it. It's just simply praised. Um, passive participles also could be translated as uh, something to be done. So you could also translate it as to be praised. So great is Adonai and to be praised ma'od. What's ma'od? Yeah, greatly, exceedingly. Where? 
Ba'ir Eloheinu. In what? This is city. <clears throat> Here's the question. Is it in a city or in the city? It's in the city because I have a construct chain, right? So it's in the city of Eloheinu, our God. The fact that I have a first common plural pronoun attached to God makes it definite, which then makes city definite because this is a construct chain. So in the city of our God. All right. We good there? Any any final ones here? 